Good morning, boys and girls. Good to see you today. We want us to begin by singing a little chorus we already know. God is so good. Sing it with me. We're going to sing it through, and then we're going to sing glory, hallelujah, because remember, we're praising God. He loves to hear us sing praises to him. So sing with me. God is so good. God is so good. God is so good. He's so good to me. Glory, hallelujah. Glory, hallelujah. Glory, hallelujah. He's so good to me. And the next chorus we're going to sing, you know too. Trust and obey. And remember, we like to do our motions a T for trust and O for obey. You ready? Trust and obey, for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus, but to trust and obey. Let's sing that one more time, because in our story today, we're going to hear about some people that didn't trust God, and then they were not happy. You ready? Trust and obey, for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus, but to trust and obey. And when we trust him and obey him and ask him to come into our hearts, then we belong to him. And the hymn I want us to sing, we haven't sung in a long time. So you may have forgotten it. I'm going to sing it through for you one time. It's one of my favorite hymns. It's Now I Belong to Jesus. But there's a big word in there. You may not know what it means. Degradation. And degradation means bring down from something good to something bad. And that's what sin does. When we sin, it brings us away from joy and happiness that we have in Jesus and causes us to have bad days and bad things. And so that's what degradation means, to degrade, to mean make lower. So listen to me sing it one time, and then I want you to sing it with me. Once I was lost in sin's degradation, Jesus came down to bring me salvation, lifted me up from sorrow and shame. Now I belong to him now I belong to Jesus. Jesus belongs to me, not for the years of time alone, but for eternity. What does eternity mean? It means forever and ever. Remember, I've told you that when we ask Jesus into our hearts, we are promised we can live with him forever and ever. Sing with me this time. Once I was lost in sin's degradation, Jesus came down to bring me salvation, lifted me up from sorrow and shame. Now I belong to him. Now I belong to Jesus. Jesus belongs to me. Not for the years of time alone, but for eternity. And so we want to thank him. We want to thank our loving Father. You remember this chorus? Thank you, loving Father, for all your love today, for sending Christ the Savior to take our sins away. That's what John 3.16 says. For God so loved the world, that he gave his only son so that we could have eternal life. So sing, you know this chorus, sing it with me. We thank you, loving Father, for all your love today, for sending Christ the Savior to take our sins away. Good job. Y'all did a great job of singing this morning. Well, we're going to continue to follow the Israelites, and they're still traveling in the wilderness, remember, 
Um, they did not get to go into the promised land because they did not believe God or trust him. Remember, Joshua and Caleb tried to tell them it was fine to go in there and that God would take care of them and protect them, but they were afraid of what some of the other spies had said. And so they're still wandering in the um, wilderness, and we're going to see what happens as they in these wanderings today. But first, let's ask God to show us what he wants to teach you and me from this story that happened so many years ago, because it has a message for us, too. Our hands we fold, our head we bow as we talk to God just now. Dear God, thank you for your true word, the Bible. Help us to listen to what this story has to tell us today about our lives and what we need to do. And I ask this in your name. Amen. Well, the people are traveling through the wilderness and they just begin to complain. They complain about everything. First, they complain about their leaders. They say, we're tired of Moses and Aaron. They're not good leaders. We need a new leader. So God said, okay, I want every tribe. Remember, there were 12 different groups traveling through here, 12 tribes they were called. I want you to bring the staff from one leader in each of your, um, one man in each of your groups, and he would be your leader, and bring that to me in front of me, and Moses will place it on the ground, and I want him to add Aaron. See, Moses and Aaron were God's choices for their leader, and said, I want you to put all your uh, staff of your leaders down there, those 12, and then I want you to put Aaron's down there too. And the one that sprouts, that means grows a little tree-like thing, a little branch, that's going to be the one, the choice of the leader for you. And you'll see that in the morning. So the next day when they came out, boys and girls, it wasn't just a little sprout on there. It was a big sprout. It formed buds, and it grew flowers, and it even produced almonds like a nut. God was showing the Israelites that he chose Aaron to serve him. Well, that wasn't enough. All right, now we got the leader, God tells us. They began to complain they didn't have enough to drink. And so God told Moses and Aaron, he said, I want you to stand in front of all the people, and there's a big rock here, and I want you to speak to the rock, and it will give you water. But Moses was so angry with the people, he lost his temper. And you know, we do things we shouldn't do when we lose our temper. And so instead of just speaking to the rock, as God had told him to, and that's why I wanted us to sing, trust and obey. We need to trust the instructions that God gives us. And he gives them to us today. He was speaking to Moses, but he gives them to us through his true word, the Bible. And we need to listen to him. And that's why we, and trust him. And that's why we sang, trust and obey. And so um, Moses was so angry that he did not, he didn't wait. He didn't just speak to the, he hid it two times. Well, God did send the water out, but he was very angry with Moses and Aaron that they did not obey him. And go, so God said, because they did not obey they would not ever go into the promised land. Well, the people began to travel some more, and they went to Mount Hor, which was going by the Red Sea, so they wouldn't have to travel through the land of Edom. They had even told the Edomites, if they had just let them go that way, which was a shorter route, that they would um, pay for any of the water or food that they used on the way. Mm -mm. The people of Edom said no. No, so the Israelites had to travel a much, much longer route. And so um, they had to keep traveling for a long time. And then they began to get impatient again. And they grumbled and they complained. And this time they said, we don't have any bread and we don't have any water. And the food we have is no good. Well, God had had it. He had to punish them where they would listen. And so, just like sometimes, you know, your mom and dad have to do this. If we just 
completely ignore what we're told to do. Our teachers at school have to do it. And so God had to send something to get their attention. So he began to send snakes to bite the people. And some of the Israelites even died. Well, the people began to cry out to Moses and Aaron and said, ask God to take the snakes away. We know that we have sinned. And they were repenting. They were so, That's what it means when we say we're sorry. Remember I've told you in 1 John 1, 9, which is, you're very familiar with that scripture. If we confess, that means repent, confess, talk to God and say, yes, I know I'm a sinner in need of a Savior. He's faithful and just to forgive our sins. And that's what he was doing. So God, Moses interceded on the part of the people and told them that the people were sorry for what they had done. And so God told Moses, this is what I want you to do. I want you to take some bronze and I want you to, uh, some material, and I want you to make a snake out of it and twist it around a pole and hold that up. And every time the people are bitten, if they look at the snake, they will be healed. And that is what Moses did. And even these Israelites, um, had, even when they had sinned against God, God, by not trusting him, God still took care of them. Well, you know, we're told that God has done the same thing for you and me. In John chapter 3, verse 14, Jesus said, Just as Moses lifted up the snake in the wilderness, so the Son of Man must be lifted up. That's written right here in God's true word, the Bible. Let me read that verse again. Is from John, and this is in the New Testament now, after Jesus had come. Jesus said, Just as Moses lifted up the snake in the wilderness, so the Son of Man must be lifted up. What was Jesus talking about? Well, God put Jesus in the position of the snake. Jesus would be lifted up high on the cross and die and take our sins away. If we confess our sins, he's faithful and just. And remember, John 3, 16 says, For God so loved the world, he sent his only Son. And we're told in Romans 6, 23, The gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. And that's what that means. The cross was the symbol that Jesus was lifted up high on that cross and died for our sins. But he did not stay dead. Remember, he rose from the dead on the third day. And he ascended into heaven. And he prays on behalf of you and me to, to God the Father. And um, in Isaiah 45, verse 22, it says, Turn to me and be saved, all the ends of the earth. For I am God and there is no other. We're told in Revelations 3.20, I'm standing at the door of your no heart knocking. That's what Jesus is telling us. If you open the door, I will come in. And that's what he's promised, you and me. But we, we have to respond to that gift. We have to accept it. You know, if somebody says, oh, I've got a present for you, until they hand it to you and you accept it, it's not your gift. They still have the present. Well, this is what has happened. Jesus died on that cross to take your sins away and my sins away. But until we confess our sins and say, I know I'm a sinner in need of a Savior, and say, Jesus, please come into my heart, then we're still sinning and we're still lost. But once we open that door to our heart and say, Come into my heart, Lord Jesus. Come in today. Come in to stay. Come into my heart, Lord Jesus. I know I'm a sinner in need of a Savior. That's what 1 John 1, 9, it says when we confess. If we confess our sins, we're saying, I know I'm a sinner in need of a Savior. I ask you, have you done that yet? Have you asked Jesus to come into your heart and forgive you? and become in charge of your life and take over your life? If you have not, 
Do that today. Talk to mom and dad. Talk to Pastor Ron about the next step. Well, boys and girls, we learned a very important lesson today. Just as uh, God used that symbol of the snake, he was pointing to what later would be what we would do to be forgiven from our sins. Remember we said we thank you, loving Father, for sending Jesus to save us, for sending Christ the Savior to take our sins away? Well, God put Jesus in the place of they looked up to that snake and they were healed from those bites. We are healed from something much, much more important. We are healed from our sins when we ask Jesus to come into our heart. Let's have our popcorn praise and thank God for sending Jesus. Our hands we fold, our head we bow as we talk to God just now. Dear God, I praise your name as my Savior. You love me so much, you sent Jesus to die for my sins. You are a provider. You provided a way for me to be saved. You are my redeemer. You bought me back from sin. You are my protector. You are my sustainer. You're the glue that holds me together when things are not going right. You are love. You are forgiving. You are King of kings and Lord of lords. You are a light. You should guide me and show me the way to go. We could go on praising you forever, but now, Father, we want to thank you. Just as we thanked you earlier for saving our souls, we want to thank you now. For God so loved the world, he gave his only son to die on Calvary's tree from sin to set me free. Someday he's coming back. What glory that will be. Wonderful his love to me. Thank you, Lord, for saving my soul. Thank you, Lord, for making me whole. Thank you, Lord for giving to me the great salvation so rich and free. Amen. Well, boys and girls, I hope that you, if you had not already asked Jesus into your heart, I hope you will consider doing that today and talk to mom and dad, talk to Pastor Ron about your next step. I love you. And God loves you even more.